Amen. Genesis chapter number three, beginning at verse number six. The word of the Lord reads as follows. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee, that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the, free, of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. I want to focus, though. I want to focus on verse 11, the question that God asked Adam. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Who told you you were naked? Who told you? you were naked. This is a very critical question. And on that question, or rather the answer to that question, reveals to us the source of our problem as it relates to our failure to operate in our dominion, as God has ordained us to. Now, we've learned that we were created for dominion, kingdom, to dominate, to control, to rule, to lead, to govern, to operate in authority, that God would now rule the earth realm through us, mankind. And we see what happened here in the garden. We see what happened here in the garden as it relates to man's rebellion, the fall of man. For God had commanded them, you can eat from every tree except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For the day you eat thereof, you will surely die. And we realize, we know what happened, we know the story. Satan deceived Eve and she ate. We talked about that last week, How you, what the reason you can't win running backward. In her attempt to be like God, being deceived as she already was, she became unlike God because Satan deceived her into eating in an attempt to become what she already was. You can't disobey God in order to please God. Doesn't work that way. But so she did. And as a result of her doing so, she gave to her husband with her and he did eat. Now let's paint this picture of what happened. I need you to catch this this Sunday morning. And he did eat. And when he ate, what happened? The eyes of them both were open. Don't miss this. And the Bible says they knew that they were naked. They became sin conscious. They became physically conscious. And the problem with that was at the same time they became physically conscious, they became spiritually dead. They knew that they were naked. They have knowledge they're more knowledgeable of their physicality than they are their spirituality. 
because now they identify themselves physically. They knew that they were naked. Look, we're naked. We're, we're ashamed. But God created them naked and unashamed. But now they find shame in their vulnerability, in their exposed selves. They, they feel guilt and shame and condemnation. And they went. And this, this fear that they receive from the knowledge of their physical being, they run and they hide. The Bible says they hide themselves amongst the trees because God is calling for them. He's calling their name. Adam, where art thou? And they hid among the trees and they begin to sew fig leaves together. Here, here, girl, put this on. Cover your nakedness. Let me cover mine. We can't come to God this exposed, this vulnerable, this acceptable. Let's cover ourselves. And they covered the parts of them that were different from one another. And when they covered up real good and God is looking, Adam, where art thou? And then when he got good and covered up with these fig leaves, they step out. Hey, God, God, here we are. Where were you? He says, God, we hid. I hid because I was naked. Lord, I ran from you instead of running to you because I was ashamed. My guilt drove me away because I didn't want you to see me like that. Lord, I was, I was naked. I, I, didn't, I didn't want you, I didn't think you would be pleased to look at me in the state I was in. I didn't think that you would enjoy seeing me that way. I hid because I was, I was naked. I was ashamed. I was guilty. I was condemned. I felt vulnerable. I felt exposed. I was embarrassed. I hid because I was naked. Listen to God's immediate response to Adam and Eve's dilemma. He doesn't, his immediate response isn't, but, but, but why would you hide from me? That wasn't his immediate response. His immediate response wasn't, but you should have talked to me. His immediate response wasn't, what have you done? His immediate response was, wait a minute, who told you you were naked? Now, the plot thickens. Where did you get that information? Who have you been talking to besides me? Why or how did you come to that conclusion? Who, who told you you were naked? I, I, want, I want you to Settle on that for a moment. Who? The question is who? <laughs> who told you you were naked? Before that happened, God was the source of their information. Don't miss me now. God was the source of all of their information. Everything they know and believe about themselves came from their relationship with God. How they saw themselves, what they knew, what trees to eat, what trees not, to, what tree not to eat from, where to go, how to govern, how to lead. All of their information came from their relationship with God. God was the source of their information. 
<laughs> because God was the source of their information, the moment they're talking to God with information that he never gave them, his question is, who have you been talking to? Who told you you were naked? Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. God commanded them not to eat from the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. See, God is a great father, and he knows how to release information with his children based on their level of maturity and their capacity to handle it. God doesn't reveal things prematurely. For instance, you don't start talking to your child about pregnancy and sex when they're three years old or when they're two years old you're not talking to them. You're not showing them how to use a kitchen knife at two or three years of age. You're not giving them their first driving lesson when they're four or five. <laughs> all right? Now, all of these are things that's going to be revealed to them, but as a parent, you're aware of the timeline and the level of maturity of what's appropriate and when they're at the capacity to handle it, right? You're not talking to them about finances and how to do taxes <laughs> when they're five. You know, you're teaching them how to count from one to ten <laughs> or whatever age. You get my point, though. You get the point that I'm making. Information is giving according to a particular time frame that considers the maturity or the capacity of the individual to handle it. So God said, do not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil because that disobedience and that act would now open up to them a world of information that they don't even have the capacity yet to accurately discern and make proper decisions from. See, God would reveal things in his time. Who knows? Maybe he was waiting to a particular part in their growth to give them the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I don't know. All we know, at that moment in time, they were forbidden to eat of it. See, the tree, the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil was not evil. The tree wasn't evil. What was evil is the fact God told you not to eat it, and you did. It was the act of disobedience. It's like if you tell your, your children, don't you touch those cookies. Don't, no, you cannot have that candy. You haven't even eaten dinner yet. No, don't touch that candy. The candy isn't evil. I mean, you know, that's arguably. <laughs> it all depends on, but this ain't a health class right now. But the point I'm making is that what would make it evil is that they disobeyed your word to do it. Now, 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 so when we look at, when we look at what they did, that they went against God or gotten ahead of God's timing or rebelled against God's commandment and God's order, and they did it. They did it. They, they ate from it. But the question is, why would they eat from it? Okay, glad you asked. <sighs> Oftentimes, our behaviors 
or a result of our belief system. Our belief system is a result of our knowledge base. See, I want you to see something here. Let me go a little deeper. <laughs> Satan know they had dominion over the earth realm. Satan knows this. Stay with me. I'm going a little below the surface right now. Satan knows they have dominion over everything over the earth because God gave it to him. He heard the announcement when God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over everything I've created upon the earth. Satan heard the announcement. So what does Satan now do with that? When Satan hears that, he says, I need access to that dominion. <laughs> I need that control. But since God didn't give Satan dominion, what does Satan do? Satan says, I just need to be able to control the one that has dominion. And I'll be operating in dominion <laughs> indirectly. Because if I control the man that has control of the earth, then now I control the earth because I control the man. I need you to catch this right here. <laughs> so in fact, Satan now wants to utilize man's dominion. Please, and we're going a little below the surface. Watch this. Satan says, I need to be able to control his belief system because he will act according to how what he believes. So Satan now comes in and he says, hey, if God said you can't eat of the trees of the garden, Eve said, no, God didn't say that. He said we can't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil or we should surely die. Uh, he, he says, girl, you're not going to die. You're going to be like God, doing good and evil. I mean, look at it. Don't it look good for food? You want to be like God, right? Imagine you're going to be wise like him. You're going to be to talk to him on his level. Oh, my God, it's going to be great. You know? And the Bible said when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, huh, it, is, it do look good for food. Now she's believing that the tree is good for food. But up to this point, we don't know how many days her and Adam walked right past that tree because they know God said don't eat. We don't know how long. We don't know days. Weeks, months, years, we don't know. But what messed up her belief? She started going to a different source for her information. She started receiving information from another being who wasn't Jehovah. And now all of a sudden, it do look good for food. Oh, it look good to my eyes too. Oh, my God, and it can make me wise? Oh, now Satan has manipulated her belief system by getting her to plug into his information base, by feeding her wrong information. He's getting her to have a wrong belief system. And what you believe will determine what you receive. Oh, my God. I need you to catch this, boy. I need you to catch it. So what happens? When she's believing wrong, he knows it's only a matter of time before she starts acting and receiving wrong. So the Bible says when she saw that the tree was good for food, pleasant to the eyes, to be desired to make one wise, she took of it and did eat. And gave to her husband with her, and he did eat. And now watch what this information did. Don't miss this. Now they prematurely open themselves up. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Girl, we're naked. This ain't right. This ain't. Now the way they see the world has changed. The way they see themselves has changed. Watch this. And the way they see God has changed. Wait a minute, preacher. How can you say the way they see God has changed? Because the same God that came down in the cool of the day to talk with him every day, he comes down again. Oh, oh, God's coming. Hide. Let's hide. Wait a minute. You never saw God as a threat? You used to see him as a blessing. You used to look forward to his visitation. 
Now you're seeing them as some threat that you've got to hide from. And they begin to hide themselves, and they cover themselves with fig leaves. And God, God comes out. Where, 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 where? Where art thou? Finally, when they get covered out, say, God, God, here I am. Say, where were you? Uh, we hid because we were naked. God said, who, who, wait a minute, who told you you were naked? Watch this. Why do you believe you're naked? Why do you believe you're uncovered? Why do you believe you're exposed? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So your mouth reveals what you believe in your heart. So he knows, where did this belief come from? Where does this belief system derive from? See, this is what Satan was after. He says, I got him now. Because for the first time, Man began to call it like he see it. Oh, my God. I'm telling you where it started. You know, seeing is believing. No, seeing didn't become believing until then. Before, whatever God said would determine what they believe. But now they're allowing what they see to tell them what believe. What are you seeing? What, what, what? Because now, now. Now they look at something, oh my God, we're naked. So now they went from, because dominion means leadership. They're no longer leading, they're following. What do you mean? They used to lead by saying whatever a thing would be, and that's what they would see. Because God says, whatsoever you call it, that's what it would be. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And he said it when he was looking at darkness. And he created man in his image after his likeness. So man could say a thing and then see what he said. But for the first time, man starts seeing a thing and then saying what he saw. Oh, I need you to catch this. Now, he began to walk by sight and not by faith. He's seeing it and he's saying it. Girl, I feel like I'm naked. And he's saying it. So now he's using the power of his words. Don't miss this. He's using the power of his words to speak life into what he see, taste, touch, hear, feel. He's using his power of words that are life-giving because life and death is in the power of the tongue. And Satan's using his tongue. So all Satan got to do now is show him something. And I'm going to get him to use his dominion to give life to it. Oh, my God, you're not hearing me, man. I, I, I need you to catch this. He says, God, oh, good googly woo. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God says, where are thou? He says, Lord. I hid because I was naked. God said, wait a minute, who told you you was naked? Because Adam, you used to come to me for information. Now you're coming to me with information. You didn't hear what I just said. You used to come to me to gain wisdom. Now you come to me telling me what you know. Oh my God, you're not hearing me right now. See, Many folk pray like this. We're supposed to pray to gain insight from God. Now we pray to let God know what's going on in our lives. <laughs> you're, not, you're not hearing me. We come to God. God, don't nobody like me. And Lord, I'm so sick and tired of so-and-so. And God, uh, I just can't take this no more. God, uh, I'm about sick and tired. God, uh, the doctors say this, and I don't know what I'm going to do. God, uh, why are you coming to God telling him you naked? <laughs> who, who told you, God says? Who told you? Somebody else has, is determining what you believe about yourself. 
Because God created them naked and unashamed. But God never told them they were naked. All they knew was they was his. It didn't matter. He told them they was naked. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. So what Satan did now, since he's got man's belief system, because now all he got to do is show them something, and they'll believe whatever he show them, and they'll confess that with their mouth. They'll believe that with their hearts, and they'll use their dominion to make Satan's agenda come to pass. I hope you, I hope you catching this, man. Satan knows they have dominion over this earth. I just got to let them know what I want them to know, and they, being the door, will project that into this earth realm. All I got to do is show them life sucks, and they go believe life sucks. So they go confess life sucks. They go act like life sucks, and as a result, their life will suck. But they'll think their life sucks because God ain't blessing them. They don't know they're making it like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Satan hijacked your dominion. Satan hijacked your faith, and he's using it to further his agenda, not God's. <laughs> oh, my God, Lord, help us. <sighs> Who told thee thou was naked? Have you eaten of the tree that I commanded you to not eat from? Who told you you was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree I commanded you not to eat from? <laughs> Whose tree have you been eating from? Who, who told you you were naked? No, 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 you're not hearing me. Whose tree you been eating from? Who told you you wasn't good enough? Huh? Who told you you weren't beautiful? Who told you you weren't special? Who told you you don't have what it takes? Who told you you're not talented? Who told you you weren't good at that? Who told you you was poor? Who told you you got to die from that? Who told you you can't live? Who told you you can't prosper? Who told you you're not smart? Who told you you can't get at that degree? Who told you you can't start that business? Who told you you can't minister? Who told you nobody will listen to you? Who told you you're worthless? Who told you you're no good? Who told you that? And you believe them? What gives them the credibility to tell you who you are when they didn't create you? Your parents didn't even create you. They delivered you. God created you. They just delivered you to this earth realm. You were created by the most high God. Who told you? Whose tree you been eating from? No, listen to me. I need you to evaluate what you believe about yourself and ask yourself, why do I believe that? You don't hear me. All my life, I was told, listen, I was shy. I was bashful. I was, I was, whatever word you want to use. I lacked confidence. I, I talked funny. I didn't speak well. See, I'm not telling you the reality. I'm telling you what I believed about myself. I wasn't, I wasn't athletic enough. I wasn't good enough. I was clumsy. I was a, I was a, I was jacked up. I was a nobody. I wasn't what the little bird left on the tree. Somebody who's lost. That sugar honey iced tea. And this is what I honestly believed about my life. And I based that belief on things I was told growing up on things I experienced growing up, things that actually happened to me in my life, things that I went through. I had data that supported this belief. 
And my life was a reflection of that belief. The problem is the who that told me that didn't know who God created me to be. The experiences that told me that were orchestrated by the devil because that's what he wanted me to believe. Most of us never walk in our dominion because we don't even know who we are. We think we're just naked and ashamed. Who told you? No, like really, like let's take somebody who think, let's say if you, you don't sing. Let's say you're not a singer, right? You're not a singer. You believe you, you, you can't sing. Now listen to me. Why do you believe you can't sing? See, here's where the problem is. You think that you believe you can't sing because you can't sing. Wrong. You can't sing because you don't believe you can sing. See, because somewhere in your early childhood, you were singing. Whether it was your friends, your sister, your brother, your mama, your daddy, your uncle, your auntie, your cousin now, somebody said, man, you can't sing. <laughs> Ooh, you know you can't sing. You must, I know you don't think you can sing. Girl, you don't sound good at all. And you adopted that belief. And everything from then to now has been operating out of that belief. This is how life works. Now, I'm not saying you was meant to be, be unsafe. But that don't mean you couldn't sing. But because you believe you couldn't sing, watch this. If there was an opportunity to sing, you never took it. Because <laughs> you didn't believe you could sing. If there was an opportunity to study voice, you didn't take it. Because you didn't believe you could sing. So you never practiced this skill. You never tried to develop it. You never did it much. Why? Because you didn't believe you're good at it. And the only reason you don't believe it's good at it, because you were told you weren't. And it wasn't God who told you. Now, lot. Take somebody who sings. Somebody else. Same age. Little kid. They song. Somebody said, well, oh, I didn't know you could sing. And the little kid say, oh, really? Well, guess what the little kid do? They song more. Whoa. <laughs> They say, hey, hey, listen, listen, they can sing, listen. Oh, they think I can sing. They sung more. Oh. And they kept singing. And they kept singing. And they kept singing. And they kept getting better. And they kept developing their gift until later in life, they're beyond saying. <laughs> Who told you? Who? Let me rephrase that question. Who's the matter with you? Did you hear what I just said? Who's the matter with you? Who have you allowed to limit your growth by their words? Who did you let Satan use to tell you you were naked? Ah! Whoo! I got so much in this. I ain't got time to finish this. Sin will make you see yourself differently. Let's end here. Who did you allow? Who did you give access to tell you you were naked and you believed it? That, let me tell you, that, let me ask, ask that question another way. Who did you let play God in your life? Because the only person that's truly qualified to give me my limitations is God. He's the only one that's really qualified to tell me what I can and can't do. He's the only one that has the right, the ability, the permission, and the credibility to determine my boundaries. Your dominion has not been being operated in your life effectively by you because you allowed somebody else to make you think you were something you weren't. <laughs> I did devotionals earlier this week and was dealing with Moses and when God told Moses, I want you to go and deliver my children of Israel out of Egypt, Moses looked at God or spoke back and said, wait a minute, who am I that I should deliver 
that I should go to Pharaoh and do this great work. In other words, Moses was asking God, who do you think I am? And that's the problem. God says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. The problem is not who God thinks you are. The problem is who do you think you are? Do you have the foggiest idea of what you're capable of? If you really applied yourself in God's kingdom? Who told you you were naked? It's time to put God back on the throne and remove whoever you let play God in your life by telling you what you could and couldn't do. <laughs> my dominion is in my identity. Who told you? I, that's your homework. I'm through preaching. Your homework is to evaluate what you believe about yourself, whether good or bad, and check the credibility of the source of why you believe that. Whatever you think you're not capable of, you've been questioning yourself about, why? And if that credibility, if that source don't lead back to God, you need to cancel that belief. Who told you you were naked? Who told you you weren't good enough? Who told you you couldn't do it? For years and years, I would have never preached because I was told I talk funny, that I have a lisp. I have an underbite, so my teeth don't come together, so I look funny. I look like I got a long chin. Uh, don't nobody want to look at me. Don't nobody want to listen to me. I'm too country. Don't nobody want to listen to you. You're not articulate enough. Don't nobody want, all of that don't nobody. I just choose, at the end of the day, it took me a while, but I finally chose to believe what God said and let him deal with the list, let him deal with the underbite, let him deal with the countryness, let him deal with all of that. I'm going to give you his truth because what you do with it is on you. You're just a chosen vessel. I don't know why he chose me. I'm just glad he did because he saved my life. I'm not here because I feel like I'm good enough. I don't do what I do because I feel so qualified. It's only because I chose to believe what he thinks even beyond what I think. <laughs> I dare you to believe God. I'm through. I don't know who I'm talking to. I dare you to reevaluate your beliefs today. And just dare to believe what God said just because he said it. You don't have to know why. Don't let anybody else restrict you from your greatness. You're only limited by your imagination or your ability to believe in what he gave you and who he called you to be. God bless you. I'm not out of word, but I'm over time. I dare not leave without giving someone the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. If you're here and you've never made that wonderful discovery of knowing Jesus in a very personal and intimate way, I give you this opportunity right now. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will let me in, I'll come in and sup with him. Jesus paid it all on Calvary. He shed his blood and he rose from the dead, but you've got to accept him. If you're willing to make Jesus your Lord, repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord, please forgive me for all of my sin. I believe you, Jesus, that you died for me. I believe in my heart you rose from the dead and you are still alive. Come into my heart. Make me a new person. Show me who I really am. And teach me how to live for you for the rest of my life. Thank you, Lord, 
for saving me and giving me new life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, we want you to let us know if you made a commitment to Christ by emailing us at calvaryhawthorne at gmail.com. And someone will be reaching out to you to help you get started on this journey. If you have prayer requests, you can also submit them to that same email. And if you want to be a part of our newsletter, as we're getting ready to go into next month's newsletter, just email us your first and last name and we'll add you to that list.